There are three things you can try to learn when we start lecturing. The first one is Salaamu Alaikum. You know what that means? Who does not know what Salaamu Alaikum is? Salaamu Alaikum is a peace up on you, but if you say it in a real, in some other places, you might get killed for it, so be careful. Uh, the other one will, throughout the lecture will, t will teach you the second one, and the third one where we're done. So, Salaamu Alaikum. And the response you say? You say, Wa alaykum as salam. Wa alaykum as salam. So, what does that mean? That means, and may peace be with you as well. So, okay. that's what it means. So, you can see the greeting of Islam is very peaceful, and this is actually how our life is, if you, want, if you believe so. So, we're going to be talking about the real, who, Islam's, who is Islam, or what is Islam, I should say, uh, who are the real terrorists and talk about Islamophobia, how the Islamophobia came about. So, but we want to show you a quick video. And some of you may have seen that. Uh, and you have to pay very attention to what Ibrahim Jaber is actually talking about. Ready? You've been systematically programmed to hate Islam, hate Islam, hate Islam. You've been conditioned to blame religion through image cognition. I can make you bark like Pavlov's dog, excuse me. I can make you bow to man-made gods, repeat what you see. Error, error, repeat after me. Fear, terror, fear, terror, terror, extreme, fear, them, fear, them, freedom, freedom. American dream, woman in a scarf, bomb, man with a beard, bomb, jihad, jihad, Islam, Islam, the war on terror, era, era, delete, brainwashed, complete, you've been hypnotized, made to believe that Muslims are not civilized, you don't even realize it, but you have justified genocide. Kill them all. Kill them, kill them all. Savage, savage. Your entire country is collateral damage. The real problem is the national debt. Era, era. Muslims are a national threat. Do me a favor and don't think for yourself. Just pay taxes if you really want to help. The people in power have this all under control. And you, 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 you should be worried about the Super Bowl. Did you hear that interception on your cell phone, era? Did you see that interception in the end zone? Patriots win. Patriots, Patriots win. That's a subliminal message. Should I say it again? East versus West. And the media is worse than a cheating ref as more Patriots touch down for a game of sudden death. But let's play with the lives of innocent people. Another epic battle of good against evil. The music is deadly and the media is lethal. Big Brother is watching and believe me, he sees you. Program after program, we are being subconsciously programmed Sitcom after sitcom, bombs drop as you sit calm. Let's go out to the theater for an incredible experiment, era, experience, filling up the eyes with lies while taking the lives of humans to see how long you just sit there and let their lives be ruined. We've successfully desensitized an entire generation through movie and video game stimulation, and overstimulation is an open invitation to blow up entire nations. Sex-driven society, who cares about Gaza? It's almost time to prepare for the Oscars. Who's your nomination for movie of the year? You cry over fiction, but real life doesn't move you to tears. Your eyes have been blinded, and your hearts are numb. Your ears cannot hear, you are deaf and dumb. And it's just the beginning before you realize what we've done. Most of your generation will be dead and gone. And it'll be too late once we wake from this sleep. The damage has been done. Brainwash complete. A little heavy. Um, obviously, there's a lot of political and there's a, a lot in that video, but hopefully we, we get a chance to, to interact with you today. The purpose of this as well is to ask Muslim people as well on how, how we feel, instead of um, getting it from uh, um, different media sources and, and also um, we'll talk about how the, um, who are the ambassadors in Islam for our religion, our ambassadors in the media right now and how they don't represent us. That makes sense.
First, I la we'd like to make a disclaimer that we are not a Muslim scholars and we do not claim to be. That's be just want you to know that. We are Muslims and do practice Islam daily. We are presenting information that is already available on the internet. So everything you see on those and the presentation is available for you to see. We're not making things up, okay? Uh, yeah, next. So we're talking about Islam and religion of Islam. Islam is actually, it's an Abrahamic religion, and some people d would try to deny that. Uh, concise and associated with mural cor correlates of religious with tradition of Jewish and Christianity. And if you really, if you do study Islam, and you can see a lot of commonality between those three religions as we speak. Uh, they, are, they all believed and worship the same God. Allah is an Arabic word for God. So if you want to say, when, some pay, when, when you hear somebody saying Allah, you go, oh. but what they actually are trying to say is God. If in the Christians or in the Jews in the Arab world, they refer God as Allah in the Arabic world, an Arabic word. And, uh, just to, to bring that into to real life, my, my uncle was uh, traveling from Algeria to here, and there was some turbulence on the plane. And his reaction was, Allahu Akbar, which is like, oh my God, that's all it means. And the whole plane turns over, and that he became a, you know, a bigger distraction just by saying, Allahu Akbar, which is, oh my God, or, uh, which is a natural reaction. So that kind of uh, got the people to be a little bit more uh, nervous about the turbulence and wondering what, who this guy is here in the plane yelling Allah Akbar, if that makes sense. So uh, just uh, put that Allah, in perspective. Allah Akbar <laughs> means that God is great. That's, and we all believe so. At any rate, Islam is Mount of this. Oh, we're not done yet. Oh, sorry. Okay. Sorry, sir. There you go. <laughs> we, we do that game. <laughs> uh, it's a monotheistic religion. We all believe in a single and all-powerful God. We oppose to the religions that believe in multiple gods. Islam proclaims Adam, Noah, Sulaiman, Moses, Jesus and as prophet and messenger of God. Muslims refer to them as uh, Sayyiduna, which is mean ma our masters, uh, which means our ultimate leader, mentor, guide, and etc. So, um, and to historical perspective, Islam was... Um, came about 600 years after Christianity, just to kind of get you, give you an idea. People, the book, so this is the, what the Muslims believe, uh, who we should follow, so we, we believe in other books as well, the Revelations is the medium by which Allah claims to have communicated his words to his prophets so that they might inform the people of his will, what he wants from them and what they must do for him in order to be saved from internal domina uh, de domination. Islam is a liberal and secular religion in a sense, it's respect all other religion as stated in the following verse of Quran. To you be your religion and to me my religion. Uh, so the verse said uh, uh, also assert tolerance to other old religion and I'm gonna go over some of the religions and the, actually the books of, we call them the uh, people of the book, and uh, they are the Torah, Old Testament. Next, please. I'm not gonna go in detail, it was gonna take us a while. The Psalms, the New Testament, the four uh, Gospels, and also the Quran. That's who we believe are the books of the, uh, the Word of Allah. Talk about the five pillars. Okay. Yeah, five pillars of Islam, um, it's a, uh, um, we declare that there is no God to worship but God himself, a single entity that's not a, a anthropomorphic or uh, we can't, as human beings, we can't imagine, we're not, um, we don't have the knowledge or the capacity to understand what God looks like or associate anything that is of this world to God. And Allah is a word for God in Arabic and it's, not, it can't be plural and it can't be feminine or masculine, if that makes sense. So it gives you an idea of what, uh, so we, we believe that there is no God but God, and then there is no, uh, that Muhammad is his prophet and the messenger. Uh, so that would be the first pillar. The second pillar is our uh, prayers. So we pray five times a day. 
one early in the morning when it's before the sun rises. Right now it's at uh, fi almost 5 a.m. Um, and then uh, the second prayer of the day is when the sun is in the middle of the sky, which is uh, around 1.30. We're missing one right now as we speak. And then um, the fourth one is when the sun gets a little bit um, um, not ready to set yet, but it's uh, early afternoon. Um, it's about 5.30 in the afternoon this time, uh, today. And then the, last, uh, the fourth one is before sunset. So right before the sunset, and that's Maghreb prayer. And then the last one is when the, su when the, when the night settles in, which is uh, right now I think it's at 10, pretty close to 9.45 to 10 p.m. So those are the, the times of prayer. And prayer is just a way for us to connect to God directly. So, and uh, before we pray, okay, we have a process called evolution, which is you go and wash your hands, your mouth, your face, your arms to here. And then also, um, you wipe water on your head, and you wash your feet as well. This is a uh, um, evolution process that prepares you for prayer. Okay. So uh, a lot of people, when they uh, they want to convert to Islam, the first thing they say is "Shahadu an la ilaha wa shahadu anna Muhammadur Rasulullah," which is the shahada. That's how they actually welcome Islam as uh, their religion. And it's salat. Uh, it's actually longer during the, the summer, and that's probably problematic for Muslims because Ramadan is actually happening in the summer from sunrise to sundown. It's about 18 hours of the day. We don't eat or drink, and we don't even can cuss throughout, during Ramadan. Now, that's a bad for me. And you can't get mad either. So, yeah. Yeah, you're yeah. supposed to treat people nicely. And, and if you go to the Muslim world, it's, it's a disaster. People are fighting and arguing and... So it, it's Muslim world, Muslim countries are not a representation of Islam. Just keep that in mind. Um, and uh, so um, there's some, some things that would nullify your fast, which is the third pillar of Islam. And that's um, abstaining from water um, and food from sunrise to sunset, from the first prayer to the second to last prayer. And um, so you can't eat or drink anything. Um, it's, you can't even smoke. Yeah, you can't smoke. And uh, so you can't ingest anything, pretty much. And uh, this is not problematic, but it's, 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 it's an interesting one. I've dealt with this my whole life here. And uh, I, was, uh, I, I used to play soccer, and my coaches thought I was crazy. And this was 10 years ago. They thought I was crazy for not eating and drinking anything. And uh, we practiced in the middle of the day. And, but for me, that was bigger than anything else. It was irrelevant what the coach has said because that's my belief that comes first. And I actually went back to the, uh, to the Sounders and I was talking to them about what they're doing, new technique, and they're actually making their kids, this, this, the, the um, athletes fast. They do intermittent fasting. And I was like, well, you guys didn't allow me to do that when I was here. <laughs> <laughs> so um, interestingly enough, it just, they found out that if you fast and you do high intensity exercises, then you're level of your growth hormones rise up in your body and your, you know, it helps you recover and get fitter and, which is interesting, I thought it was interesting. So, sorry, I went way off topic. <laughs> Sam is looking at me. Um, I was a cat. Charity is a, another, uh, another uh, pillar of Islam. So whether you're poor or you're rich, this is an obliga obligation. So you give to someone that has less than you. Okay, if, uh, and it's a, uh, it's an important one because um, it, it, it's, it's set up where you have to, um, and excuse my, I'm, I'm not a religious scholar, but I know that you give you percentage. a percentage of your money, you cleanse pretty much your money. Especially if you have money sitting in an account and you don't touch it for a year. If a year rolls over that money, you have to give some of it away. It's just sitting there. Someone else might need it. Because we believe that that money is literally a gift for you and it's not all yours. It was given to you and it could have been given to anybody. And we all know money comes and goes, right? So. And zakat, just not money. It could be food, it could be clothing, something you get from your heart. Okay, and the last one, the hajj. The hajj is a pilgrimage to Mecca. Um, we are very lucky. And I'm, 
One thing I want to talk about is, I know there's a lot of bad rhetoric about Islamophobia, but we are fortunate compared to, to be here and also live in a society where, where we can uh, still practice Islam and, 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 and it's like that throughout the world. But people back in Algeria where I'm from, they, there are so many people that want to go to Hajj, they do a lottery. So they actually, because they, they can't accommodate all these people. And, um, and every country has a percentage of people that go once a year. And I think it's, you get anywhere between five to six million, if I'm not wrong, in, in Mecca, which is a small city in the middle of Saudi Arabia. And it's, it's, it's the harshest environment in the entire world. It's really, really hot. It's, uh, and, and, and the Hajj is a physically demanding ritual. It contains a lot of rituals that you're supposed to do. Um, one of them is running back and forth between two mountains. I, so it, it, it's, there's a lot of rituals that, you, that are associated with it. And this goes back to the Abrahamic religion as well, to the uh, a sunnah, which is a, uh, a um, uh, what we call a, a practice of uh, Abraham. Okay. Uh, and the Hajj, actually, uh, the only time you are allowed to do it, if you are able, or you can do it financially, but you're, you don't have to do it. But if you only do it, uh, you're required to do it once in your lifetime. So if you are able financially to do it, you can actually do the Hajj. But a lot of Muslims don't because they financially are not able to. But, uh, and uh, when you go to the Hajj too, it's really interesting because we talk a lot about, um, about equality and diversity. You get people from all over the world and everybody wears the same thing. They just wear a sheet that's wrapped around their bodies. That's all you wear because in Islam when you die, that's all you're going to take with you, you know? So you just wear that sheet, whether you're rich, poor, from any country in the world, everybody is the same, doing the same rituals. So that term Hajj happens once a year in Islamic calendar. Islamic calendar is about 11 days shorter than a Christian calendar. And, but if you do it outside of that time limit, uh, then we call it Umrah. That, that's uh, not necessarily Hajj, but it's something you actually do actually, a friend of mine just sent me pictures of him from Saudi Arabia doing the Umrah. Okay. So, <laughs> so what Islam actually teaches, all creatures are equal in every aspect. There are e neither caste system nor class system in Islam. Uh, male and female are equal and have equal rights. Free will is well placed in Islam, yet all power is to God. Human rights and all beings' rights are protected and prompted in, to, in Quran, Holy Book of Islam. Quran is not only a book of do's and don't, but also a way of life for peace and prosperity, prosperity to all beings on earth and beyond. Most do's and don'ts are conditional and agreements are encouraged in Quran. Same message that CNN gives you. <laughs> so, uh, no, no, it, don't uh, do that. And, and this is really important because please ask a Muslim person, okay? Ask, sorry sisters to embarrass you, but ask the sisters back there about the hijab. Don't ask, you know, Barbara Walters or someone on yeah. CNN about it. <laughs> Ready? So this, <laughs> these are the average numbers we gather. Some people, there are about 1.7, almost some people say almost 1.8 billion people, Muslims are in the world, but the bottom number is 1.6 billion people in the world. What that equates to, 23% of the world populations are Muslims. So one every four people you talk to in the world is a Muslim. But some of them, they look a Muslim because they have the beard or the abaya, or, some, uh, or the women have the hijab but not necessarily all of them were, uh, are in the same image. 65 of all Muslims are uh, non-denominational Muslims. They are, that means Muslims do not belong to a specific Islam denomination, but accept Islam as a, relig as a religion generally. And, and you see the majority of Muslims are what we call them moderate Muslims. That's how we consider them, moderate Muslims. Islam is a personal religion. It has neither clergy nor religious authoritative system. It promotes personal relationship between God and humankind. So for Muslims, there are a lot of scholars that we can uh, seek to for interpretation and understanding, but not necessarily to follow 
and that's what we feel as a Muslims. Not like Christianity, there is a pope, there is a the church, there is a ministry that you follow. In Islam, there is no such a thing. Okay, uh, and the relationship in I believe in my personal belief. Uh, Muslims are, they have direct relationship with God. So whatever you do as a person, do be, uh, uh, doing good to other people, uh, help other people, and pray and read the Quran. This is the relationship be- I ha- that I have between me and, my, uh, and God. Next, please. The Sharia law. Uh, it's coming to Texas. <laughs> coming to Texas. How many of you believe there's a Sharia law book? Raise your hand. B- before we read this, there's no Sharia law book. Sharia is only interpretation of a certain person to the Quran. That is all. There's no Sharia law book. If you really want to know the Sharia, read the Quran. That's it. It tells you everything. But again, because we're not a scholar, we rely on other people to interpret the Quran to, uh, for us, or uh, even from Arabic to Arabic. So we rely on their understanding. Uh, there, is no, there is not one Sharia law to follow. Many sectors of Islam have their own interpretation of the Sharia law. And there are eight major religion, uh, sectors of religion of Islam. I'm, I don't know all of them, but I'm not going to go over them. So each one of those sectors, they have different interpretation of the Sharia law. Now, my scholar tell me if their interpretation can contradict the Quran, so don't go by it. So we also have to follow the, the Quran. Uh, sometimes the resources are falsely attributed to the Prophet of Muhammad, and when they're falsely attributed, guess what? And that's when other people uh, utilize that against us. Next. So you, hear, you hear a lot about Sharia law in, 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 in uh, the, the media, and, and, and especially a lot of rhetoric right before the election, and you've, that's what you hear, and I feel like every time I turn on the TV, I don't know if I'm being... Uh, because I am Muslim and I hear that a lot, but I listen to Sharia law, terrorists, Muslim, Sharia law, terrorists, every third, fourth wor- uh, word. So, and I think it's important to understand that not the entire Quran is Sharia law. I think it's, uh, I, I can't, I'm not completely sure, but I know it's less than 1% of it is. So out of the, the entire content of it, I know that uh, there is, um, uh, again, we're not Muslim scholars. Uh, again, I'm, yeah, so it's, uh, <laughs> It's not the, the entire Quran is not Sharia law. So, let me, uh, before I, I go, go, don't go, don't go. Oh. Before I go to the next slide, we saw the word jihad. How many of you think, that's what the exercise I want to do in the class, I just didn't do it, in the class, I'm sorry, in, in an event, I didn't do it. How many of you think jihad is a bad word? Please, honestly, raise your hand. I'm not going to hunt you. So. Why do you think jihad is a bad word? Can, I, can you answer that? It's so much equated to um, sort of like a war or a battle mm-hmm. or something like that. Associated with killing other people. Right. Okay. You know, how many of you is really struggling in their classes? Raise your hand. Only one person? <laughs> oh my God. Let me repeat that question. How many of you is really struggling in, in, uh, in their classes? Raise your hand. Keep your hands up. How many of you are struggling doing their work? Raise your hand. Okay. How many of you are struggling to make a living? Raise your hand. Keep everybody, keep your hands up. How many of you struggles when you drive? I hate driving. Raise your hand. <laughs> Guess what? You are all jihadi. Jihad is a struggle. You're struggling in classes. You're struggling in work. You're struggling in driving. You're struggling in understanding people. Jihad, that's that real terminology of jihad, okay? But the way we interpret it is associated with killing. By whom? By Muslims. So the meaning of the word jihad is struggle or strive or striving. Uh, the term is jihad of war, fighting or combat in the name of Allah is never really used in the Quran. There is no concept in Islam obligate, uh, obligating Muslims, I'm sorry, to wage war for propagating or propagation of implementation of Islam, war is only def- allowed in defense. Jihad is not a violent concept. But again, the way we interpret it, the way it's being used by the media, the Western media, I'm not just saying United States, it's European also, they, they, they twist that word jihad like salamu alaikum or Allahu Akbar. 
You understand? They make it a bad thing, but it's not a bad thing. Okay, what's next? So this is the verse of this is the verse of the Quran, and whoever saves a person, it is as if he saved all mankind. Next, please. And the verse prior to this, whoever kills a person is as they killed the entire mankind. It's next. It's right there. Oh, sorry. Sam's, okay. Sam's presentation. <laughs> okay. This is, um, this is an interesting video that uh, there's an organization called Care. They did this video. I don't know if you've, some of you might have seen it, but. I think it's really, I think it's pretty funny. Do you think your neighbor is a terrorist? Hey, how you doing? Hey! Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! Does your fear of Muslims get in the way of living a normal no, life? No! no he's he's coming! No. Did you call in Uber? Yeah, we'll take the next one, it's fine. All right. You saw the app. I didn't know, I didn't know, it said no, I didn't know. Do you judge people by their outer appearance? Introducing Islamophobin, now in an easy and convenient chewing gum. Starts working within five minutes to relieve bigotry and intolerance. Call your doctor if your Islamophobia worsens or you have hallucinations that discrimination isn't real. Side effects include fondness, brotherhood, acceptance, loss of bigotry, increase in rationality, and possible denouncement of superiority. I didn't realize I had a problem, but admitting is the first step. Islamophobia worked for me. Ask your doctor if it's right for you. Your name was next to ISIS, not mine. <laughs> yeah, my name is Osama. Imagine that in 2001. So, uh, I'd love to give you a story. In 2001, I had a, a conference. I lived in California. I had a conference in Phoenix in September 22nd of 2001. Now, if you were or during that time, there's a lot of flight cancellations. A lot of flights were canceled and people backed up. Um, I had to wait 11 hours for my flight to leave Phoenix to Los Angeles. And uh, when the, uh, one of the uh, airline agents asked me not to go on the airline, on the, air, on the airplane. I had a, another class to teach next day, I had to leave. I had no choice but to leave. And she called me out loud through the microphone, Mr. Osama Al-Khalidi, please approach the bench or approach the, the desk. So I, wanted to, I said, and when you say Osama al Khalid, everybody's gonna look, where is Osama coming from, right? So we'll offer you $300 and the next flight not to go on a flight, not to go on this airplane. I said, no, I have to go. And had two other teachers with me. Five minutes later, Mr. Osama al Khalidi again, loud enough to come to approach the desk. So I came and said, we'll give you 500. They started going up to $800 not to go on an airplane. I only paid $300 for the airplane ticket. So I could, I could rent a car and drive to Los Angeles, you know, it would be probably easier for me. But no, I want to make a point. I'm an American. Although my name is Osama, I'm still proud of my name. A lot of my friends said, you should change your name from Osama to Sam. That's what people know you by. I said, no. However, all this because of ISIS, or before of ISIS, we're going to be talking about the history of ISIS. So when you are, when you hear ISIS, what do you think of? War. But you know, there's an Israeli secret agent called ISIS. <gasps> I'm not going to talk about that. ISIS actually used to know, be known also as the ICL, uh, which is Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant. Levants are, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Lebanon and Syria. Uh, and part of, of, of Jordan and Palestine. There are many factions of ISIS and, uh, and many different titles, but we will call them Daesh. When we, Fozi and I, talk about Daesh, we don't call them ISIS, we call them Daesh. Why Daesh? Because it's an abbreviation of Arabic word, it becomes Daesh, 
and they hate to be called Daesh because the meaning of it is similar to being stumped in humility. So we call them Daesh because we want to stump them in humility, all right? Uh, next, please. So their history. The, this is not the first time uh, this kind of concept came to create an Islamic world. Actually, in the 19, 1970s, uh, 1930s, actually, that concept started by another group. And, but the, the Arab world took them 40 some years to actually vanquish them. Uh, so it's not around. But there's other uh, terms that started that we supported as a United States government to fight Russia for us during the the Cold War. I hope you guys are familiar with the Cold War. So the CIA supported that Mujahideen, back then, was an uh, uh, Afghani group, to fight Russia for us. And we supplied them with intelligence and weapons to fight Russia for us. And they were successful. They driven Russia from uh, Afghanistan. So that's when and Mujahideen uh, overthrown uh, Afghanistan, and there were a vacuum of there is no actually another uh, government to govern pa Afghanistan. There were old communist rule that was still there as the governor of the government, but slowly they were, uh, they were pushed away by a new group, Al Mujahideen. Then slowly the Mujahideen is gone, then Al Qaeda came in in power. So Al Qaeda is part of the Mujahideen, they just created their own group to actually control of uh, that region. The United States military has left many weapons and arsenals behind that led Al-Qaeda to be the strongest, uh, the strongest uh, group in that region. The, the way United States left Afghanistan to fight and murder each other has driven the extremists to unite against them. So pretty much it's not an accident that they all drive Toyota trucks <laughs> that you see driving on the freeways here. So. Uh, Okay, I'm done. So, and uh, because uh, Hillary Clinton in the uh, early 90s, she actually admitted that's what we, the United States was behind the creation of Al Qaeda. And, next slide. And Al Qaeda was led by this guy, none other by Osama bin Laden. That's a uh, bad Osama and a better Osama. Uh, Al Qaeda came to power as the strongest faction of the region have tried to infiltrate surrounding Arab countries but failed. That's including Jordan, Iraq, uh, and Lebanon, and Syria. But, word, uh, but worldwide network to gather intelligence, so they are great and uh, very nicely uh, networked throughout the world, worked with rich individuals from the Gulf countries, and specifically Saudi Arabia, for financial support. Osama bin Laden is actually one of the very rich Saudi Arabia uh, prince, I should say, that uh, he, he, he gained a lot of money and support from them, uh, became their leader in 1993-94 with the goal to drive away Western influence from the region because you see that the Western influence as a bad influence driving people from the, the original Quran where they are doing the bad things. Next, please. So the reverse of ISIS it started happening when the, about five years ago. Some, that would have became the strongest, 2011 I should say. Uh, after the United States invasion of Iraq in 2002, it created a lot of hate for the United States because it changed the way the Iraqi government was actually structured. And that was bad for the, a lot of regions in that area. Many groups have become an offsh offshoot of Al Qaeda. First, we have heard of Daesh in 2005, as they are right now, but they were very small. They were almost unheard of. In 2006, they had a plan to take over Iraq and the Levant. Again, that's Syria, Lebanon, and uh, as part of it. They came to full power in during, in during 2011, uh, during the revolution Syri uh, in Syria. Syria, President Bashar Assad did not actually help the situation. It actually made the situation a lot worse. Because there, during the Syrian, in, in 2013 or so, 2014, uh, Bashar Assad released almost 15,000 of those, of those groups to create their own strong um, 
militia to fight not just the Syrian government, actually to find the rebels. Actually, they're not even fighting the government, they're fighting the rebels. Go next, please. Oh, you went too low, too far. Yeah. So terrorism and Islam. Terrorism has no place in Islam and clearly forbidden Islam in light of teaching of the Quran. Suicide attack terrorism is clearly forbidden in Islam. Quran state practices of masculine and in murder of entire town or country or tribe is also forbidden. The predominant theme in the Quran is for forgiveness and peace. Most people who do terrorism are mentally sick or brainwashed by self-serving politician and misguided and, mis and self-proclaimed clerk. Do you guys believe that? I'm going to show you numbers to actually back this out. Because those are very small numbers. Do you want to add, add anything? Yeah, uh, think about the, the, the biggest concern of radicalizing people. Um, and it, it, you know, there's all these media videos. Actually, um, interestingly enough, the, um, the rhetoric from the pre-election is actually used as a tool to recruit terrorists by ISIS. They're showing them videos of our current administration saying, saying things. Look, they, so that's it. They're saying, hey, look, they hate you. You got to hate them back. So uh, and uh, there is some research done by the University of Duke about youth in America, Muslim youth in America. And they talked about how the students or the kids that are connected to a community, they're part of a stronghold Muslim community. They have support. They attend the mosque. They're not the ones that are outcast on their own. You know, those are, you know, most of the, the uh, American Muslims that have been accused of terrorism or been involved, like the San, San Bernardino uh, uh, couple, they, they were not associated with the community. They had so many issues within themselves and they were kind of uh, removed from the community. The same thing with the person that was, uh, uh, involved in the uh, um, in the Orlando shooting, uh, he wasn't part of a Muslim community. So these, so that the youth that, that are involved in the Muslim community get really frustrated because they they have a nice solid foundation base. They have com a community to rely on, and they're getting thrown under this umbrella that you're you know uh, you're terrorists and you're trying to. Uh, uh, so they have a sense of insecurity. So they come to defend. Uh, to, uh, and they they feel like they're constantly having to defend themselves against um, the media. And think about it this way. You're an American Muslim, but you can't be a Muslim American. You can either be an American or a Muslim, if that makes sense. You can't be both an American and Muslim. And that's really frustrating for a youth. Um, that's, I, I work a lot with the youth in the area, and that's what they talk about. So. so now, I'm going to let you read this, see if that makes sense to you. If, uh, so these are the lone wolf that we talked about. If it's, uh, um, also think, of it, think about the, uh, um, if any time there is an incident on the news, you know, and I turn on the news and I hear something, I'm like, I hope his name is not Muhammad or something like that. And I, 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 I it, it, this is the reality of it because, because the minute that comes out, it's like, there we go again. Um, we had, in the U.S., prior to 9-11, the Muslim community was, didn't exist in, in a sense of a one big Muslim community. But there are communities from mid, maybe they have the, uh, they represent the nationalities, maybe the Somali community, the Saudi community, uh, the Iraqi community, but 9-11 kind of brought the community together to advocate for themselves. It was something that happened, so the community said, okay, we're not worried about our nationality and, 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 and our group. We are all Muslims here. Let's figure out how we can you know, um, talk about Islamophobia, talk about the real truth behind Islam. Um, and then, so that happened. Um, the more, now there's so much more awareness of, of, of Islam. So I think a lot of things that, that, we, that our youth miss, and we talk about this a lot in, in our groups and in, in the Muslim community, is there, there is issues, but it's actually 
a good thing that, we, that there is Islamophobia because it, it allows us a sense of resistance in educating people. We wouldn't be here talking about this. Okay? So, you know, 30 years ago, I mean, 10 years ago, we wouldn't have had a, this big of a voice and it's not, it doesn't allow us to bring awareness to the, to, to the situation in other places. Um, sorry, I'll let you get to the, to the objective part of the presentation. So, I'm gonna, sh we're gonna start sharing with you uh, some statistics that we collected and we presented in here. So, terrorist attacks in, in, in Europe, in European Union, that's what that means. A religiously motivated terrorist attack. So we have the red mark, not religious terrorist attack, and the blue mark is a religious motivated terrorist attack. That's not just uh, Muslims, this is all religious. And look at the blue line. It's, also, it's almost does not exist except 2012. But we don't see that. Uh, the terrorist attack in the United States. This figure, I actually received it from, CI, uh, from FBI. The United States uh, suffered approximately 14,000 murders in 2013 since, not, uh, since September 11. Muslim Americans terrorism has claimed 37 lives in the United States out of the more than 190,000 murders during that, this period. In 2015, there were 250 mass shooting. I don't know, 200, 2015 during Obama administration, 2015 was the highest mass shooting that happens in the United States. Uh, but one Muslim actually was participating in that at San Bernardino. We only talked about the San Bernardino shooting. We forgot the other 258. So that's what really bothered me. Uh, according to FBI, data compiled by Princeton University, uh, Islamist extremists were responsible for just 6% of the terrorist attack between 1980 and 2005. So if you look at the, 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 the chart, so the most uh, victims are ha done by Latinos, 42%. Those are drug dealers and, and some kind of uh, domestic violence. Other 16%, those are, were not quite compiled. Extreme right-wing group, 24%. Who can give me an example of that? And it's happening more now than it was four years ago. It's happening more now than it was a uh, few years ago. Do you guys follow the news? Do you agree with that? This number has, is increasingly growing at this time. Jewish extremists, 7%. Islamic extremists, 6%. And we still have communists is about 5%. So the communists are not quite gone yet. Uh, now, Muslim numbers around the world, and they were said there are about 1.6 Muslims around the world. They're modest, about uh, 1.1 uh, billion, 1.1 billion, excuse me, uh, uh, Muslims in the world that are considered moderate, moderate, and known is about half a billion, just unknown. They don't know what affiliation, whether they're moderate, they're just unknown. And there are extremists, about 1.6 million extremists out of 1.6 billion, those extremists. We're not saying those extremists are actually active extremists in a way uh, they go ahead and commit crimes. So who are out of those 1.6 millions? 30% are others. ISIS are 31%, Taliban 35%, Al-Qaeda 4%. Al-Qaeda is just now growing. It's using what's going, the election of the United States and it's also following what's going on in France. You guys are following France election? It's ex they're exactly going the same way uh, and using the same method Trump did to win the elections. And this is really dangerous. The extremists, think about the, the environment for the extremist population. Think about that Syrian boys, that, those Syrian boys that you see, the traumatized kid that his whole family di died. So how, what is, what are his, you know, what is he gonna not like, you know? And those are pretty much breathing grounds for extremists, terrorists, right? That, that's, that's, that's the reality of it. So um, it's not, um, it's, the, it's the aftermath of a war. It's what's, you know, it's a country depleted of resources and, and uh, uh, people dying. It's those vulnerable, that vulnerable population that doesn't have an opportunity for education, that doesn't have an opportunity for, to do anything, to work. Um, I moved here because of something similar to this. Um, 
in uh, 1994, there was a revolution in Algeria. So the uh, um, things weren't very good. There was almost a, a mini civil war, but it was, uh, you won't hear about it because of, you know, the, there's not very much news that can come out of Algeria for political reasons. But it's also, um, um, my dad brought me here because he's worried about me. And, and I ended up here because of that. Um, and I was, uh, uh, and that was, uh, and I had a younger brother that was three years younger than me. It passed away, actually. He got killed by ISIS, by, you know, extremists. So uh, he was just in a store that, you know, got robbed and got shot. You know, so it's, uh, and they're just militia groups that go around and, you know. So it's it's really the environment more so than, than the actual, um, um, you know, and, and the people that don't have community support, this is why we try to um, to get around our community and, and rally them up and make sure they have support. And, and it, it's important for, the, for us as a college to do that and, and, and help in that sense. So uh, let's, I'm going to ask you questions. What's the best way to put that question? So ISIS, who are the most victims of ISIS actions? Who are, are the most victims of ISIS actions? Innocent. Who are the innocents? Here in the United States? Yes, Abdi. Muslims are the most victimized uh, group of ISIS. 86% of the victims of ISIS were Muslims, are Muslims. Do you understand? 86%. So, and again, people fail to see that. So who are the real terrorists? I'm going to go through there. I still have about 10 uh, presentation, uh, slide presentation, and we need to have some Q&A. Uh, definition of terrorist, the use of violence of, to, and threat to in, intimidate or coerce, especially for political purposes, the state of, of fear and submission produced by terrorism or terrorization. A uh, terrorist moth, a method of governing, of arrest resisting a government. So, uh, 19, uh, 2009, FBI office here in Seattle, they invited us for a presentation. They are uh, talking about terrorists and when they were not presented to a uh, general audience. So, there were about 10, 15 of us sitting in that uh, Seattle Police Department, and they were showing their presentation. They were listing all these terrorists. But every time there was a killing or something big, guess what all the images are? They were Muslims. They did not use any of these pictures, a white Caucasian picture as a terrorist or murderer. They all they just used Muslims' pictures, and that really bothered me. So we all spoke out, and hopefully they change it. So what do you think? What kind of picture comes to your mind when you search for terrorists or you talk about terrorists? Who think about it? Now, click, right click. Don't don't go what, slowly. You think of Daesh or ISIS or ISIL. Next. We need one of those clickers. I know we need one of those clickers. <laughs> I have you. What do I need clicker for? <laughs> or how about KKK? You know they are on a rise. Thanks to who? To our administration. They are on a rise. Uh, they probably have a, a lot, I know they have lobbies in administration. Go next, please. They are in administrations. How about this guy? Who is this guy? He went to the church and killed how many? 15 African American. And what, what, how did they identify him? As a sick person. Yeah. Next. Imagine Muslim did that. How about Timothy McVeigh? That's before September 11th. How many did he kill? 178 people in Oklahoma bombing. Okay? Nobody, know, nobody talks about him. How about this guy? How many people did he kill? Millions. You should Google a picture of Iraq before the war and after, and just the recent one. It's devastating. Syria as well. It's, it, it really is just shows you the, the impact of what that administration did in Iraq. Just Google it when you get home. Compare the two images. Yeah. How many people think he is a terrorist? 
When you kill your own people, how many? Almost a million of them, in my opinion, as a terrorist. Okay, next, please. And the last one is this guy. Why is this guy on, the, uh, on my list? Because he's killing the people in Yemen. We don't hear about it. He killed almost 400 people, 400,000 people in Yemen. How come we don't hear about it? Because Saudi Arabia is an ally of the United States. So we're not going to hear about it. OK. Go next, please. So what do we find search for terrorists? If you go to Google, any of you right now on your cell phone, go search for put terrorists. What is the first picture that comes to your mind? This. Show. This. Osama bin Laden is still there. Look at this guy. Who, who is this guy? Last time I did that search, George Bush was there. Anyways, <laughs> next. So this is Google. This is, uh, what is this one? It's Yahoo. Again, I went to a different search engine. I put just terrorists and see what the images is going to come up. This is the brainwash that the media is actually doing to you about Islam. Do you understand? Next, please. I think one more search. The next one is, I think, is Bing, which is, yeah, Bing, which is uh, Microsoft. Look at that. William Smith's not even in there. OK. So who are the real top, real terrorists? I'm going to go kind of quickly. Uh, Osama bin Laden was in, uh, responsible for 4,000 deaths. Most, most of them were in the Twin Tower, 2001, September 11. Next. This is just in the US. The other ones don't count because they're not as equal. Yeah, I agree. Sam, you How about this guy? Time. I mean, Adada. Idi Amin. 300,000, but we hunted him down. How about this guy? 600,000 death he was part of. I'm going to go through this quiz. How about this guy? Mussolini killed 300,000. How about this guy? We don't hear about this guy because, again, Indonesia is uh, one of uh, the countries that we work with. There was responsible for 800,000 deaths. How about Gans Khan? He killed two and a half million people. Most of them were Muslims. But nobody talks about those either. But guess what? His people became Muslim afterward. Uh, about King Clever II, I never heard of this guy until the search. Killed about eight million people in Belgium. Next, please. Uh, everybody heard of Joseph, Joseph St uh, Stalin. He killed 23 million people for the, the purpose of the communist revolution. Next, please. And about Adolf Hitler, everybody knows him because we hate him. He kills about 23 million people. That's during World War II. How about this guy? We don't hear much about him. He killed 60 million people in China. 60 million people. This is not my data. This is, you go search for it. It comes up there. I'm not making this up. Oh, I'm sorry. We're not making this up. Your slides. <laughs> he is, you can blame him. How about the genocide of Native Americans? We're neglecting that. We don't hear this, you know, when we talk about terrorism. How about African Americans, slavery? We don't want to hear about this because what it does not put the United States in a good image. So we're not going to talk about it. Canada talked about it. And it acknowledged it and acted up on it, but we're not doing that. Current terrorists, it's going on in numbers. Those numbers are changing. Uh, I don't think that's quite accurate now. Go next, please. Uh, so why are we hated by the Muslim worlds? Fact one, the West, the West drew the line that ex expected everything to just work. What do mean they drew the line after World War II? They colonized our countries. Syria, used to be called the, the, the country of the Sham, was Lebanon, Syria, and Jordan, and even some of the Palestine. They divided us to control us. They, they give Egypt to England. They give Lebanon to France. This, they colonized us. It's happening right now in Syria, if you're paying attention. Yes, it is happening right now. Right as we speak, it's happening. They're drawing lines. So the West has treated the countries of the Middle East like a pawn in a class game. This started in the 60s. This started in Lebanon during the 15 years of the Civil War. They made it a Civil War, but it's not. It's actually a pawn 
by the Western world. And that is Israel existent. That is a big, big problem for us as well. I tried colonization, colonism. Uh, we continue to support horrible regimes that's talking about the local regime in our countries, uh, the war in Iraq and Afghanistan. I can put Pakistan in there because it's not quite uh, solved. And we only get involved when it suits us. Syria does not suit us. There is no interest for the United States in Syria. This is why Syria is in a wormhole right now. Uh, how about Syria? Go next. Who is killing the civilian in Syria? This number is going to, I don't know if you've gone to this website. I can share it with the class, if you, um, with the group if you want. Go next, please. I'm going to go all the way through. We can read this. I want to say that's the Syrian regime. 95% they're responsible for the Syrian death. Now, we're trying to fight that, but it's a little too late. Next. Uh, how many children died in Syria? 91% of the regime were responsible of killing if we, of the children in a regime. That number has risen, by the way. Sorry, it's about do you ever wonder thousand. why they talk about children dying? and not normal adults? Because the adults are gone, pretty much, you know? It's because in, in, when there's a war zone, they will take out the adults and they kill them. And then there's children left, and women and children, you know? And why they kill children? Because they don't want to grow up and rise against them. That's their, uh, that's their excuse. Uh, how about, the women in Syria, again, similar numbers. 91% of the regime killed the Syrian women. It's almost 20,000. That number has risen in recent months. Uh, torturing civilians uh, to death in Syria. Look at the number. Almost 100% done by the regime. 100%. And how about killing the medics? You know, do you, uh, you guys, I don't know if you guys were following what's going on in Aleppo. Aleppo is a city in Syria, was, is the largest city in Syria. For the government to control Aleppo, they destroyed every hospital in Aleppo. They're trying to kill every doctor in Aleppo to control Aleppo. Last, uh, this past summer we had uh, um, students here, well, little kids here, refugees from Syria, and uh, we did a program with them here on campus, and we presented to them a... Uh, a presentation on Aleppo, how it's a nice the white destination helmet. for tourists to be to go to. But they're thinking, I just came from there. It does not look like this. <laughs> it might have years ago, but it, it's it's really being current with this stuff is really really important, really important. So the real numbers of election 2016. Uh, that's right after election. These numbers have changed. 35 so Americans have favorable opinion of Islam to the lowest rating in th since 2001. 32% of the voters do not believe Muslims should be eligible to sit in the U.S. Supreme Court. 59% to 70% of Americans believe Islam has a little or nothing in common with their own religion. 25% of Americans don't want Muslims as their neighbor. 35% of Americans favor requiring Muslims, including United States citizens, to carry special uh, ID cards. One statistic I'll add to this, I don't know if it's on there, uh, but 50% no, uh, of Americans have not met a Muslim person. Actually more than that. More than that, yeah. Yeah, actually more than that. So uh, let me tell you the first class I taught after September 11. It was uh, it's a semester system, it was 2002, the spring 2002. Uh, when my class roster, they put O. Al Khalili. And people took my class because it's a, you know, it's a, it's a popular class. And my class is always filled up. It's a transfer class. I had 42 students in my class. I counted them. When, and when I spelled what the O stood for, five students walked out. No reason. Five just walked out. It got better. Next semester, only three walked out. So it was getting better. Things are improving. I saw positive out of this. I think it was the grading method. <laughs> the class hasn't even started. <laughs> So yeah, 52% of Muslim Americans said they had personal experience racial or religious discrimination. 76% of the young Arabs said they were personally discriminated against. Over 400 reported, this actually raised to 600, I should have updated this. Since the election, 
they were discriminated and, ha and uh, harassed by uh, others. Hate groups are all, all time high. Uh, the poverty level center of the report, uh, the first time since the center began accounting the, such a group in 1980s, hate group topped 1,000. Again, the number is higher. Time Magazine reported that militias have doubled and the President Obama is receiving 400% more death threats than the President Bush, uh, according to the Secret Service, although the rise in hate and hate groups not directly connected to Islamophobia is significantly contributing to factor. Do you, do you remember the allegation of Obama being Muslim? Yeah, who was pushing that allegation? Yeah. So what, what if he was Muslim, you know? Uh, I think this were nearing the end. Okay. U.S. identified more than 172 Muslims American terrorists suspect on preparatory uh, uh, since the 2011. It's only 1% of the United States occurred uh, violence each year. Only 1%. Muslim American community has helped security and law enforcement officials to prevent uh, nearly two, uh, two every five Al-Qaeda terrorist plots. Europe in 2011. Afghan, those are names, are there uh, uh, terrorist attacks in Europe? Uh, how about Burma? Even our Pope talked about Burma. You know how many deaths in Burma? How many, who is dying in Burma? How many of you know what's going on in Burma? Right. So, uh, very, yeah. so as there's a small minority of Muslims that live in Burma, and they're called the Rohingyas, and they are extremely oppressed. They, they are, they're literally being burnt as we speak. Their villages are getting torn up. And, and, it's, uh, and this is done by, um, I'm not saying this by, by any means to, to, to say religious, um, to fil affiliate this with a religion, but it's Buddhist, uh, Buddhist um, inspired, you know, uh, attacks, if that makes sense. So there's the, there's the Buddhists that don't want the Muslims to be there and exist with them. Okay, so I'm not saying this Buddhists are killing people, but that's kind of, kind of like the other end of us being here, Muslims being the terrorists, if that makes sense. But if you, if you get a chance to look that up, it's really, really interesting and it's uh, really sad. And there's the first Rohingyas uh, refugees got here, I think this past summer, which is pretty cool. There's a couple uh, families here from, the, from that community. When our administration and the UN condemn Israel for what they're doing, that's mean it's bad. Because why? Israel is our sister country, or as our, we, we protect Israel. Don't you agree? So when, if our administration condemn the United States what Israel have done, that's really bad. Israel in 2015 alone, they were, uh, had 400 and acts of terror. Okay, we don't want to talk about Gaza because that's completely uh, uh, annihilation right there. In the United States, FBI studies uh, showed 42%. That's, I think, those data we've seen before. You can skip it. So these are local FBI terrorists that are listed. Army of God, uh, Aryan Nation, Black Liberation Army, the uh, Covenant, uh, Jewish Defense League, and Ku Klux Klan. That should also be the first one. So in conclusion, this is the last slide. Please note that not all Muslims, uh, not all authors are Muslims, and not all Muslims are terrorists. That's what Fox says in 2010. They had a big sign saying that not all, ter not all Muslims are terrorists, but all terrorists are Muslims. Is that a true statement? They said not all Muslims are terrorists, but all terrorists are Muslims. They've said that many, many times, and that stuck to people's mind. When you hear terrorists, you hear Muslim. Uh, please know that you may have the chance to, uh, to be killed by a light and strike than you are by a Muslim terrorist. Please know Muslim Islam, the, the, the translation of Islam in English is mean peace. Q and A. Questions? I know some of you have a lot of questions and waiting for me. They said, I hope I can answer it. If not, I know quite a few people who can help me out. All right, we're ready. We have 15 minutes for questions and answers. Any questions? Yes. I 
are you able to pray with a person who is praying? Are you able to do it? Uh, let me give you examples. There are a lot of churches before mosque was really existed. A church has worked with Muslim community to allow them to pray in the church. Do you understand? I, uh, I was at a mosque on Friday. We, there is a mosque that just opened by Starbucks here. If you, I don't know if you knew that. It's right down the street um, behind the gas station. So um, I was there for the, uh, the, the prayer, and there was a, a gentleman there, uh, a, a Caucasian uh, um, American person that's been attending for a long time, for the last couple of weeks, a uh, couple of months, and he's been coming every three months, and and uh, and he's attended the mosque, and you know, and the reason I know this because he came up and testified that he wanted to be a Muslim after being there for a long time, but uh, uh, the mosques are always open to the public, and you can go pray uh, anytime. Um, there is no. Uh, um, as Muslims, we cannot, I can't tell Sam that I'm mus more Muslim than he is, or he can tell me that. And uh, uh, oh, we, we don't, we're not the ones, I don't have the authority to judge each other. So. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing too in Islam, we don't, we believe, we believe that that um, Islam is a message to mankind. So who am I to say that what that person is going to be Muslim or is going to be you know better than I can ever be? You know if that makes sense. So uh, it's it's so so that's to answer your question. It's not um, uh, you know it's it's we can't judge that if that makes sense. Yes, I am really sorry we didn't, uh, we didn't address that. So the, Let me stop for a second. Okay. If you have a question, this is why those microphones are here. If you want to come, come up in line. If you don't want to come up in line, we'll come up. Yeah. Um, so um, the Prophet Muhammad uh, is, uh, is um, first of all, Muhammad is the most popular name in the world. And you, you know, if you, if you do the, uh, take the entire world and say, you know, in, Mus in the Muslim community, it's, it's a lot of people name the name Muhammad. My dad's name is Muhammad. So yeah, it's, it's a brother. very, a very, very common name. Um, and it's because we believe that the Prophet Muhammad is the perfect example of a human being that ever lived. So it's kind of an honor to name the person Muhammad. So sense. there are also a lot of abbreviations for Muhammad, like Ahmad and Mahmoud. They're abbreviations of Muhammad. Too, so, as yeah. well. so now you know what our Muslims names are, right? Anyways, other questions? My question. It's okay? My question is about, and first day, I have two questions, like, but before my question, there's two times that I get sad. And that two times are when I hear a Muslim person commit some crime. All the people, no matter where, which religion, they think maybe that all Muslims are the ones who do bad things. No, we are not. I'm a Muslim and I have never thought to do something wrong to anyone. But when some Muslim people they do, and I hear, I feel up. People will think all Muslims are the same. That affects me. Then I worry about the incidents. Another thing is that when um, black people do something, same, I feel same. Many people believe it's black people are doing bad things. No, they don't. I'm a black, I have skin, black skin, and I don't think to do anything wrong. That's what I, what I feel to is. And my question is, you say, it's not only Muslims who are terrorists. There is a lot of different terrorists. Okay, why Muslims are the ones carried with their terrorist name? Why they, the world doesn't call other people terrorists? But all Muslims are the terrorists when they do something wrong. My other question is, how Muslim people, Islam people, can introduce to the world which is blind? I, I believe world is blind about the Muslim because Muslim is not to kill others. Muslim is not to harm others. And instead is to support and help others. How Muslim people can introduce who they are to the rest of the world. 
Thank you. Uh, we are fighting a big war. Are the Muslims, we are fighting a big war. Uh, I'll give you an example. In 2003, in California, where I used to teach and direct a program, there was a big hype about a, 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 a reverend coming from somewhere in the Midwest to talk about Islams and Muslims. I was extremely happy for someone to actually come and talk about Islams and Muslims. So when I attended his, I even told my students come and go to his presentation to kind of learn about Islams and Muslims. And boy, I was so sorry. The first thing he said, Muslim has contributed nothing to humanity. They're nothing but murderers and killers. Yeah, you can look him up. His name is Dr. Carlson, somewhere, I forget his first name. So, from the very first moment, for an hour and a half, now I'm kind of a very kind of, you know, some people call me an angry person. I was sitting there respectfully trying, and I was dying to kind of speak out and tell him how wrong he was. He was actually taking verses of the Quran and twist them in an English. Quran does not translate correctly to English. Just, just I want you to tell you that. Although there are translations, uh, there's a lot of explanation trying to get you the right meanings of the Arabic into the Quran, into English. And it's, uh, sometimes it fails miserably. And he uses that as a, a weapon to uh, put us down and make us murderers. However, I was real proud of my students. We called them, they called them liar, and they did not respect them. I just walked out of his uh, presentation. At the same time, people knew I was a Muslim because I was known by Sam instead of Osama. And they were surprised. Why am I standing and talking against this guy? So I'm a Muslim. So, but you're Sam. So, no, my name is Osama. You call me Sam. Do you understand? This is the rise of the Muslims' hate. But hey, hold on a second. This didn't happen after September 11. It actually was happening way before September 11. It came, it came to the top after September 11. Um, Abdi, I feel your frustrations, and and I know I know what you mean. Um, I think it's it goes back to what we talked about earlier. If you're an American Muslim or if you're a Muslim living in America, then you're either one of the good guys, okay? I have friends that say, I used to think it's funny when I said, oh, he's one of the good Muslims. And now as I got older and a little bit more aware, I'm like, what, what do you really mean by that, you know? Um, I, I used to live in downtown Seattle. One of my coworkers lived on, on Queen Anne Avenue. So he lived about three or four apartments you know, north of me. And at like four in the morning, there used to be this somebody in this scooter that was so loud that came down every morning. And um, so, and we talked about it the next day. I asked him, hey, did you hear that guy? And he goes, yeah, he always wakes us up. It was, I don't know what kind of a scooter it was, but I know it was really loud and, and it woke us up. So my friend sent me an email and he said, will you set up a road bomb for him? You know? I laughed about that. I thought it was funny. And then the next, and I went and confronted him. I said, you know, what do you mean by that? You know, I, I, and I think my, the moral of my story is it's going to take courage from the Muslim community to, to stand up for themselves and, and, and advocate for, your, for, for yourself. Um, and and, it's, and it's, it's our responsibility as well as a community to talk about it, to get to know people. To, 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 set, to set an example, to develop relationships, and I think that will help alleviate all those, all those issues and people see the human side of us. The interesting thing is Muslims, we've been dehumanized. So we're, we don't, we're not human anymore in the eyes of the media and some of the communities, and that's the reality of it, you know? So. There's another statistic that's falsely been uh, spreading throughout the, uh, the world. It's been around for the last four or five years, and my brother sent it to me, and I told him, brother, please don't send that statistics anymore. The statistics say Muslims will control Europe by 2030. Why? Because Muslims, they have four to five children each family, where the Europeans, they have maybe one child per family. So by their statistics, and the immigration is coming to Europe, by their statistics, which is false statistics, Europe will be controlling Europe in 2030. So imagine, if somebody kind to come in and take over your house, what happens? 
You want to defend yourself. So these are tactics to generate that fear that you, oh, I want to do something. I want to put somebody in the administration to fight those people so in, in order not to grow or to immigrate to this country. You understand? It's happening now in Europe. So don't believe everything you see. Uh, even my own people believe that. And when you really look into the statistics, those are false statistics. Oh, we get, Muslims can be all over the world. That's not true. That's not true. We are an increasing number, not just because Muslims make more babies, because there are other factors as well. Any other questions? We don't want to talk about Muslim food. Ramadan is coming. You know, how, knows, how many people heard about Ramadan and know what Ramadan is? Raise your hand. Ramadan is going to be on May 27 through July 25th. I'm sorry, June 25th. Uh, we, we, as uh, my brother here said, we fast from sunrise, that's 3 o'clock in the morning, to sundown, that's 9.15 in the night. We're not going to be able to drink, eat, or, in, or, or put anything in our, our body. So just to let you know, if you're my students, I'm going to be very cranky during that time. So I make sure I teach in the morning and I leave in the afternoon. So I want to be cranky. Uh, usually, uh, it takes a lot of uh, toll on our body, but again, it's, just, it's a way to cleanse our system. And some people try to fast with us. They're unable to because they're not raised that way. But it's really a way for us to cleanse our system. Like uh, Fozzie said earlier, it feels more energetic, built his metabolism, and so on and so on. That's exactly how to regenerate your body. Any other questions? Did we answer everything? Oh. Yeah. Yes, Doris. Oh, I want to know, um, yeah, first and foremost, thank you all so much for presenting today. Um, for those of us that are really into wanting to know more in terms of the news that is not oh, yeah. American news, like what would you recommend in terms of um, resources that we can get more up-to-date information on what's happening, especially in places like Syria and Yemen, et cetera? Uh, have you guys, Bill Riley was outed from Fox? Bill Riley was gone from Fox, but nobody's talking about it because Fox don't want to lose his audience. At any rate, uh, yes, I don't follow CNN. I definitely don't follow Fox. I don't follow any of those major news. And I'd go to, uh, there's a lot of other news I can follow. RT is actually for Russians and for Al Jazeera. I don't follow Al Jazeera completely, but there are a lot of other news you can actually read and compile your own news. Uh, the nature of news lately, it's, it's what happened who gets it out first. So, and I think a lot, there's a lot of misinformation that goes out in the news. Um, and then by the time there's evidence and credibility, there's another news story and it never gets resolved. So I would recommend, um, if you're interested in, in a news source, then just to kind of follow that news a little bit more and watch the story develop. Uh, for example, there was a, there was a, uh, a terrorist threat that was a, 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 a young Muslim person that planned to blow up, uh, do stuff in New York and uh, New Jersey recently. I can't think of his name, but um, his dad ended up turning him in. Turn him in. He, he yeah, called the was, FBI and said, hey, my son is not okay, you need to look into this, and they caught him. But you won't see that piece in the news. You just hear, Muslim guy is going to blow up some New Jersey, and then by the time that story develops, a couple of days, and, you know, and then there's another story and another story as well. So, and I think it's just finding a way for, to find credible news. Um, um, even Al Jazeera and news from the other side is also swayed. So, I mean, it's... It, it is a really, really tough, challenging time to find uh, news, honestly. Uh, I can't, um, it's, it's just, you know, um, just like everything else, everything is so saturated in, in, in a fast-paced environment, and, and most people get their, you know, news from their Twitter or, or, or Facebook feeds, and it's, you know, and you see but 100 you people died in Syria, and then you see... You know, a, a cool Facebook page, and then you see something else, and then you see something else, and it becomes, you become numb to it. So I think it's just, a, it's tough to, to let the news impact you.
this data. But it's, you should Sorry. really hear the news from everyone, but also find, look for other resources. Like I, I listen to CNN, I listen to Fox, I listen to other news media, but then I, I actually talk to people from the ground. Now, I have a lot of friends. They are pro-Trump and against Trump. Actually, I have more against Trump than pro-Trump. And I have a lot of friends that are pro-asset and against asset. You have to listen to both of them to, to make sense on your own what really is, it sounds better. I mean, if you're, you're, you're intelligent enough to make sense out of, the, out of the news. If that doesn't make sense to you, there's something wrong. Yeah. They investigate. So be smart about this. Develop relationships, especially I'm going to speak this in terms of Islamophobia. If you have a question, walk up to a Muslim and talk to them. They love to talk about their religion because they think if they convert you to Islam, all of their, your deeds are going to be theirs anyway. So, so go talk to them anyways. Ask questions. It's, they'll be happy. They'll stop everything that they're doing and they'll just say, hey, what, what else do you need to know? So that would probably be the first you know, uh, source to go. Go to the source itself. Just like you college students, you learn in that, what's, what class is that, two English research class? So you got to filter through, the, 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 through it to get to the credible sources, if that makes sense. But, um, Any other questions? One, one last question. Yes, sir. Not, not Saudi Arabia. Yeah. No, no, definitely yeah. not Saudi yeah. Arabia. Well, that's, that's a really good question because I think a lot of times when, when we talk about Muslim countries, think about where you go when you think about Muslim countries. Usually Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, Afghanistan. So there is a big difference between those countries. Um, I'm from Algeria, and it's, it's completely different than Saudi Arabia under completely different laws. Uh, the largest Muslim country in the world is... Anybody knows that? Indonesia. Okay. And, and you don't hear anything from Indonesia from the Muslim community there. So, and I think um, there is a huge influence um, uh, of, of the Western influence because those are just trends and people tend to follow trends just like our youth here follow you know, uh, regular trends. And I feel like there's a lack, when there's a lack of education, any wind can take a generation, you know? any information and any trend will sweep that across. And I think in some of those countries like Syria, Iraq, and, 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 and even in North Africa, they're victim of colonizations. They don't have a base for education. So any trend that comes along will take them. And, and it feels like they're uh, being westernized. So you get these people that are thinking, oh, we're losing our youth. So it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a really deep-rooted uh, uh, issue. But I also think uh, it's, it's not a... Uh, um, it's definitely the the the, uh, um, the communication tools as well uh, these days. So, um, so I hope that answers your question. But uh, if you have a chance, go look for Afghan history. How to uh, see how Afghan people looked like back then? Yeah, like it was completely different. Yeah. 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 European. So what has happened when in Western countries invade or uh, intervene their influence in a country like this? Other source, other elements kind of trying to defend it, you understand? And that's what happened. So there's, uh, there's balances, you know? So that's what we're talking Have about. Have you guys heard that quote, um, best way to destroy a civilization is to sever the roots? And I think that's kind of what happens generally if you take away the roots in their education or history, then it becomes, you know, something else. So there are two words we didn't talk about, I yeah. forgot. One of them says, inshallah. Inshallah. And it's God willing, so we all be living peacefully, inshallah. All my colleagues know that a lot because they went to Egypt with me. They hear that a lot. A lot. And another one is alhamdulillah. This is a little bit difficult to, to learn. Alhamdulillah, we all say that all the time because we thank God for everything, for the good and the bad. So inshallah, we all live peacefully. Alhamdulillah to have you as a friend. Okay. Thank you very much for your time.